back with you here from Guitar at Work. And this is going to be a fun one. Um, this is Fleetwood Mac's uh, Never Going Back Again. Lindsay Buckingham, of course. And uh, a lot of requests for this one. I'd like to send it out to uh, Mike in Pennsylvania. Michael in Pennsylvania. And to Kevin in Waterloo. We've been talking about doing this song for quite a while. Thanks for that. But lots of requests for this one. And... Uh, I think you're gonna enjoy this one. I wanna tell you this in drop D tuning. Don't let that freak you out. There's so many great songs in drop D tuning. It's only one string you have to change. It's only one string. Let's take care of that in just a second here. And um, I wanna thank you for your coming back and your thumbs up have meant a great deal. All the comments and suggestions, meeting so many great people. I appreciate that very much. We'll go through this one bar by bar. The great thing is, as fancy as that looks, and it is, it's fancy. You don't want this to be your first finger picking song. That's for sure, like Landslide would be a good one or Dust in the Wind, uh, just to get that right hand thumb going. Um, but we are capo four. Don't forget to mention that. We'll end up uh, uh, drop tuning in just a second. But there's only eight bars in the whole song to learn. That's that's you know, thank goodness there's only eight bars in the whole song to learn. Then there's only two sections. I'll call it the verse and the chorus. The verse is the same as the intro. There's only two sections to learn. A total of eight bars, four bars a piece, kind of thing. Um, so and then it just repeats, and it'll be easy for you to put the stitch together the arrangement and uh, and play along with the recording at some point. So let me talk about this. And first of all, I want to send you to patreon.com slash guitar at work. I sometimes forget to mention it. I got it all on one page here. It's handwritten in a, a transcription. Patreon.com slash guitar at work. I will be referring to this uh, all through the video and it's going to help you follow along for sure. I've got it up here in my trusty iPad. So um, I think I'll be putting up the bar numbers on the screen to help you out. You're going to go end up going bar by bar and then stitching it all together. So go grab that for patreon.com slash guitar at work. And for those of you who have already been there, and they're supporting this channel. I really, really appreciate it. You're helping to keep the lights on here, so thank you for that. I'm going to pop my capo off here for a second, and I'm going to go back to standard tuning. There, I'm back at standard tuning. It's that easy. Now, drop D tuning. Uh, if you haven't done it before, if you have, bear with me. But I'm going to play my D string here. The open D, it's your third thickest D. Now my low E. I'm going to bring it down until it matches. Now they're an octave apart. This is a higher D than this guy, of course. There you go. That's pretty darn close. And I'm going to, you can use a tuner for this as well. The tuner's gonna say D. And I'm gonna give it a little, little tug like that because it wants to creep back up a little bit. There you go. I'm gonna pop the capo on four, capo four. Boom, I can double check it again because the tendency no matter uh, of a capo, no matter how good it is, is to make you a little bit sharp, especially when you're in drop D, the string's a little bit soggy. Open D and then. Close enough for jazz, as they say. There we go. There we go. Um, so that's drop D tuning. Again, so many songs use that tuning. You definitely, if, you're, if it's your first uh, sort of D tuning, or it's not an open tuning, it's a drop tuning, uh, you definitely want to be able to do that. If you have to go radically in any one direction, stop, because you're probably, you've overshot and you're going to bust your string. So watch out for that. Just, it's a fairly small movement. Okay, so we've got our sheets for patreon.com. I'm going to go bar by bar. In bar one, first of all, fingerstyle, of course. And I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this shape um, in bar one. It's uh, you're seeing a D right now. It's not your garden variety D like this guy here. It's not that guy. Watch it. It's this guy here. But I want to take you uh, a little mission on how to get there. Instead of just staring at those numbers, I'm gonna play an A chord like this, barring the top four strings, just up to and including the D string. I'm playing an A chord. Then I'm gonna put my ring finger on the fourth fret of the D string, fourth fret from the capo. Watch out for that, the capo is now zero. Ring finger is on the fourth fret of the D string, middle finger is on the third fret of the B, and there's our shape. So we've got the A here barred, and then this, when I put the ring and pink, a middle finger on, that makes it a D chord. It's not the D you're used to, that's for darn sure, but it is a D, no doubt about it. So that's gonna enable us to, which is a riff. It's very much like uh, Salisbury Hill as well, if you look through that song. Um, so it's almost two for one in this case. So again, here's my A barred, and here's my ring, and here's my middle added there. There we go. That's your that's your first shape. We're in bar one. Now I'm going to play with anything on the on this sheet, on my sheets anyway. Uh, if finger picking is properly notated, when the line is going down underneath a number, a line is called a stem. That means it's your right hand thumb. Be really careful of that. That the assignment of strings to fingers in this case, in this song, is thumb, thumb, thumb. Your thumb handles those three strings. Your first finger handles a G string. Your second finger handles a B, and your ring finger handles the high E. That is so important to have a system like that. Then when you go from one song to the next, it's not just willy nilly whatever finger works. You just oh, it's this. Okay 
your fingers are trained uh, to stick with their respective strings. So really, really important. Uh, I am on that shape again. Here's bar one. I'm going to play the low E string. Boom, like that. And I'm going to play thumb first and second. And that's that cluster you're seeing, the four, two, three. Sorry if that's difficult to make out. You got low E, which is now a D. I'll call it a low E. And then your cluster. There you go. Then the A string. There we go. We've got the first three attacks. We call them and do that again. And then the cluster. And A. Notice your thumb has played three different strings. Here it is again. Cluster. Go. And now this business here is a hammer on. You'll see a little H written over top as well as those slur markers. I'm going to take the ring and middle off. Take those two guys off. I'm left with just that A portion. And I'm going to play those two strings with the right hand and hammer them back on. Just like that. Here we go. Now, if yours are not as loud as you want them to be, your hammers, if they're a little bit uh, quiet, a little bit sheepish sounding, just keep at it. You have to be pretty sure footed. There you go. I give them a good. It's hard to get them to land at exactly the same time, but that's just a little bit of practice and away you go. I'm going to go from the very top. Here's bar one. Off we go. I'm going to play that low E again. Here it is again, top. And low E. Good, now this next bit, we've got the two on the G string. Nothing had to move. Now pinky gets added to the fifth fret, to the fifth fret of that high E. Here it is there. Now it's all in the right hand in this case. Nothing moved in the left. Once I've added that pinky, I'm going to start from there. The four and five that are vertically aligned, here it comes. That's it. Now you may have to stop tape right there. Just get that first bar because um, that particular system, that technique is going to recur throughout the song. So it'd be a good idea to stop on bar one, get bar one, and then go into bar two, etc. It's going to get easier and easier as you go. Here is bar one, very slowly round around bar one. Three, four. Hammer. Do it again. Three, four, bar one. It's all in the right hand there. Okay, bar two, um, we, 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 we have that on. I'm going to take my pinky off of there, and I'm going to pull off. That's it. So we start with the D shape, that fancy D shape, and cluster pluck here, and then ring in middle, pull off. Again, top, bar two. There you go. And to get a good pull off, you may have to pull it down toward the floor. If they're not as loud as you want, give it a little bit of a snap down toward the floor. It's almost like a fake pick stroke there. Here it is again. Bar two. A string. There we go. And now for the five and five you see vertically aligned. Here's a big stretch. I'm going to get rid of the first finger and I'm going to go uh, ring and pinky. Fifth fret of the D and fifth fret of the B with the ring and pinky. So I've abandoned that shape. Uh, it's a tricky, it's a tartar if you keep them on there because it's a heck of a stretch. And it's those two notes at the same time. Okay, so here's the beginning of bar two. Here's the shape. There we go. And then I'm going to go back to that famous D shape for the zero and three. Okay, beginning of bar two up to that point. There we go. I'm going to add that pinky. Very much like the back end of bar one there. So here is bar two again, top three, four. One more time, bar two, three, four. Hey, good. So again, stop tape, that's bars one and two. That could take a little while. Don't expect to do it in real time. Um, hopefully you're reading that just fine. Here's bars one and two back to back very slowly. Three, four. Jump. There's bars one and 
two, good stuff. Into bar three, uh, this this shape I'm calling an A13. No third, it doesn't matter, just call it. A13 is fine. Um, big stretch, uh, ring and pinky go back to where they were there. Uh, ring finger on the fifth fret of the D and pinky on the fifth fret of the B. And now I have to bar, the, I'm gonna bar the top three strings or four strings on the, on the uh, second fret. There we go. So look at that stretch you get. Now, if you have trouble with that stretch, if your thumb is up like this, you're doomed. You're doomed. Your pinky is rendered inoperable. He just won't do anything for you. So it's important. I'm going to duck my left shoulder and get that get that wrist out, come in from underneath. That's so important. I'm coming in from underneath. That's huge. Even with the length of my fingers, uh, which are pretty long, um, I would have trouble getting that stretch without, without ducking like that. And there's your shape. There you go. Now, once you have that shape, once you have that shape, it's all in the right hand. Nothing has to move in the left. So I'm going to grab that shape. And here is my right hand, bar three. Round and round. It's like a three against four thing. It's this pattern set. There's 16th notes, which are typically four notes, but he's doing a pattern of three within that. So it's pretty, really cool. It's got a lot of tension to it. Here it is, bar three again. I've got the shape. It's all in the right hand. Here we go. It was all bar number three. So stop tape there. Grab that. And here's bars one, two, and three back to back. Three, four. Okay, I'm gonna head back to that D shape. There's your infamous D shape that we started with. There we go, that's bar the beginning of bar four. And I'm gonna go up to the five and five you're seeing there, and it's, it's slid. This is kind of neat, you're sliding five to the five and five. So I've got ring finger on five of the D, pinky on five of the B. We've got that, we've been there before. And we slide that up, up to seven. Just ring and pinky, pick them both, and then up you go. And when you arrive on the sevenths, that's when you want to play that bass note. You're seeing an open A bass note written in there. So I'm going to go slide. And as soon as I arrive on the sevenths, you play the bass note. And back I go to the fives and then to the D shape. Okay, so bar four coming your way. Jump, slide. Add my pinky here just to finish it off. It's all on the right hand again. All of bar four again. Three, four. There we go. Hey, that's four bars. That's your verse. It's your intro verse. It goes round, around, around. And then all we have now is the chorus. So take your time. That's four bars. You probably have to stop tape there and make some sense of that. Again, grab those sheet, uh, grab this sheet from patreon.com slash guitar work. That's what I'm referring to. Um, I think you'll find you get through it a whole lot easier that way. Bars one to four, just before we launch into the chorus. Here's bar one, three, four, and uh. Here's bars one to four again. Stretch, bar three. That's better. There we go. Okay, into the chorusy bit. If you're Hey, if you're back, you're ready to go through the chorus here. Here's the uh, sound of it slowly. We'll go through it. It's that business there. Uh, so just a couple of shapes to worry about. Um, you're going to see a, a zero. Boom. And you're in bar five here now. Seven and ten. That's my first and pinky. Seven and ten from the capo. There we go. And then we play the open A string. Now in this nine you're seeing, I'm gonna go grab him with the ring finger. 
I'm also going to put my middle finger back here on the 8th fret of the B. We don't need him yet, but we're going to later on. So let's get him on there. I'm going to play the 9 all alone. The 7 to 7 is already there. I'm barring now that 7th fret. Okay, here's the first uh, 4 or 5 attacks in bar 5. Okay, there we go. Let's do it again. Bar 5. go see that shape there now I'm gonna go back to the pinky he's barring he's barring the top two strings barring the top two see the two tens you're getting there so middle of bar five the sevens are already there that's in your bar with your first finger again middle of bar five it's all in the right hand at that point Here's bar five. I know that's a lot right there. Um, you just get the one shape and it flips. So here's bar five again, slowly I'm starting out. And notice uh, I, I start out with the bar and this guy here. So he's starting out zero, seven and 10 and he's barred. The top two strings are barred because we need him later. Just get used to it that way. Nine, there it is. We're barring with the first finger to pick up those sevens again. Bar five without stopping. It's a small movement. Here's bar five again. That goes a long way now. Um, bar six is this guy. It starts out the same way. That's seven and ten. And the nine and eight. Look at that. There's your other shape. Which is really an A7 of sorts there. First finger is state. He's barring the D and G strings there. So bar six coming your way. And I'm going to go back to that pinky bar on what will be the 10th fret from the capo. Okay, so again, it's really just flipped from this shape to this. That's really, that's what's going on. It's two shapes, two shapes. Here's bars five and six, back to back. Take a break if you need it. This is getting heavy. Here we go, bars five and six. Six. And do that again. Here's bars five and six, three, four, and up. Seven is the same as bar five. You gotta like it. Bar seven is the same as bar five. We've got this. Barring that pinky. Okay, bar seven coming. Good. And holy cow, to finish it off, the last bar you're gonna need is uh, bar eight. We run down to a B minor. A B minor full shape there. You probably have seen that before. And everything you need is in the, is in the, is in the left hand, so it's all in the right hand here now. Now this it says F sharp minor, but remember we're in a funny tuning here, so it's not your standard F sharp minor. You have to run for it. I'm going to go from the beginning of bar eight here. I can put my ring finger now. Get rid of the B minor. Ring finger on four, and then your your first finger is barring uh, the, the D, G, and B strings. That is an F sharp minor in this tuning, so. Playing a four and a pair of twos, and then the two on the D string. As per your sheet there, and you're back to B minor. So here's bar eight, most of it. Back to B minor. And now the end of bar eight is first finger, play the two, pinky goes to five of that high E, and we've got that little hammer there. So here's bar eight solely. It'll feel kind of disjunct. It is funky for, for sure. I was, remember first learning them again. What on earth? Okay, you have to, once you get a little bit of speed, which is common in finger picking, that it you're wondering where the song is until you get a little bit of speed, a little bit of flow. That's totally reasonable. 
Um, so eight bars there. Let me play the bars five, six, seven, and eight, your chorus section. So here it is, we're way up high. Three bars, five, three, four. Six. Seven. back up to bar one. Okay, so let's give it some context. I'm gonna play slowly, slowly through it. Bar one. slow tempo. Um, again, you don't want this to be your first finger picking piece uh, because there are, you know, there's some quirky things in it for sure, which makes it such a magnetic sounding riff. It's such a great song. Um, again, you have two sections there. Now it's up to us to go in there, go into the, this is based on the original recording and just go in and say, how many times has he played, you know, the, the first section, the, what I'm calling the verse, intro slash verse. Uh, he does that how many times? And then he goes into the chorus. You're clearly you're going to hear it go way up high. So just, hey, make a note. It's good for you to have to go in and do that. There's only two sections through the whole thing. So it repeats, Phil. Um, so that was one of our trickier ones for sure. But I want to thank you for coming back. All your thumbs up. I would encourage you again to go to patreon.com slash guitar work. Grab this sheet. It will help you. Uh, ask me questions down in the comments. Always happy to answer them. And it's great to meet all the people. Thank you again. Uh, Mike in Pennsylvania and Kevin in Waterloo. A great, great song. A great request. And uh, sorry it took this long to get through it. Uh, but I've had it on the, uh, on the calendar for months to do this song. So thanks for coming back. Your thumbs up have meant the world. And I look forward to meeting you down in the comments. Have fun with this one. Let me know how you're doing. Okay. Cheers. Bye-bye. Three. Power and up.